On the other side, Li Chang and the others set up camp and rested on their way to Unju. Seo Bai went into the mountains to gather some herbs for future use. However, she constantly felt like someone was following her. But every time she turned around to check, there was no one there. She continued digging for herbs, but soon she felt a cold sensation behind her, as if something was standing right behind her. With one hand holding a hoe and the other slowly reaching for a torch, she finally turned around and let out a scream, which quickly attracted Li Chang and the others. Everyone thought Seo Bai had encountered a zombie, but when Seo Bai ran towards them, they carefully observed and realized that the bloodied and disheveled person following her was Cho Biam Pal. Li Chang got angry at the sight of him and kicked him to the ground. He now wished he could just kill this wretched county magistrate with one swing of his sword. But unexpectedly, why was Cho Biam Pal here? Cho Biam Pal explained the whole situation to the crown prince and revealed that he was the only survivor on the ship. The ship was heading towards Anju, and Li Chang had a bad feeling about it. If a ship full of zombies docked in Anju, the entire city would be in danger. Once Anju fell, zombies would quickly climb over the city walls, and the whole capital of Hanyang would be at risk. There was no time to hesitate. They had to depart immediately and make their way to Anju. At the same time, the ship had conveniently stopped at the border of Anju. Inside the city, life appeared prosperous, although there were rumors of an outbreak outside. Under the governance of Anhyan, Anju remained peaceful and prosperous. People gathered in the streets to worship the deities. Meanwhile, Anhyan was guarding a wake in the mountains, and his subordinates reported the situation of the beacon being lit at Dong Rei. He showed no signs of nervousness. However, when he heard that a strange epidemic was breaking out in Dong Rei, where the infected, even in death, didn't truly die but turned into monsters. On high and paused for a moment but maintained his composure, clearly. He knew something about the situation. He immediately ceased his current task and made a bold decision. That means the guardians are not allowed to come down the mountain. Shortly after, he received a report that a ship had been found in the river outside Anju. With a team of people, he immediately went to investigate. Since ships were generally state-owned, he guessed that the docking of the ship and the beacon at Dong Rei must be connected. When they arrived at the ship, they found it empty. With all the belongings and valuables gone, the cabin was covered in bloodstains, and they noticed a box inside. Carefully, the men approached the box and opened it, only to find it empty. Except for traces covered in bloodstains, they realized that something unfortunate had happened to the people on the ship. The puzzling question was, where did the dead or injured people go? Meanwhile, on the other side, Li Chang and the others arrived at a small village outside Anju after traveling day and night. Strangely, in this era of rampant undead, the villagers were enjoying roasted meat and drinking alcohol. However, upon seeing Li Chang and the group, they became visibly anxious and quickly withdrew, hiding their food. Li Chang knew something was amiss. When they questioned the villagers, an elderly man hesitated before claiming that they had earned the food through their work. But when Cho Biam Pal saw a woman coming out of a room with the same fabric found on the ship, Everyone understood that the food and supplies they possessed came from that ship. The villagers, caught in their lie, immediately knelt down, confessed their wrongdoing, and revealed everything. They had discovered the stranded ship on the shore. However, when they entered the ship, they found all the people dead, seemingly devoured by large beasts. The bodies were torn apart and in a horrific state. Due to their desire for the ship's provisions and fear of being discovered, they buried the bodies. Li Chang was troubled because he knew that burying the bodies wouldn't stop them. The villagers offered to lead them to a nearby reed marsh. They had to decapitate the buried bodies before sunset to completely stop the threat. Unbeknownst to the desperate group, they failed to notice the villagers' sinister gaze. As they reached an open area, the villagers stopped in their tracks. They brandished weapons at Li Chang's group, knowing that stealing their provisions was a severe crime. Though the villagers had lived long enough, they were willing to silence Li Chang and his companions to conceal their guilt. The guards were infuriated and demanded the villagers put down their weapons, emphasizing the importance of the people standing before them. Roaring with anger, they tried to reason with the villagers. However, the villagers had already made up their minds. In their eyes, only dead men keep secrets. Meanwhile, Li Chang tried to reason with the villagers, telling them that there was something more important than the crime of stealing provisions. He explained that if they didn't deal with the bodies promptly, their children, families, and even the entire city of Anju would be in grave danger. He urged them to reveal the location of the bodies. Unaware of the impending danger, the villagers calmly stated that the bodies were buried beneath their feet. Li Chang and his group looked around in horror. The sun was setting, and darkness was approaching. They prepared their weapons for battle. At that moment, 
The villagers noticed movement in the reed marsh. They saw the buried bodies writhing mysteriously. Suddenly, a zombie emerged from the ground and attacked one of the villagers, biting him. The villager picked up a sickle and struck the zombie, but it had no effect. It was only when Li Chang swiftly severed its throat that it stopped moving. A louder commotion arose from the grass, indicating that all the zombies were coming back to life. Li Chang told the villagers that if they wanted to survive, they had to decapitate the creatures. Once again, everyone prepared for the impending battle. With a beastly roar, the zombies emerged from the underground and charged at the crowd. The villagers, inexperienced in combat, became easy prey for the zombies. However, a new wave of zombies emerged from the ground, intensifying the fight. The group fought with all their might, finally managing to eliminate the large number of zombies. As the sun set, another wave of zombies rushed towards them. Li Chang, exhausted, collapsed on the ground, just as they were about to become zombie food. A rocket flew in and saved him. A group of well-trained soldiers in white robes emerged from the reed marsh. It was as if they already knew the weaknesses of the zombies. They skillfully aimed their blades at the zombies' necks, swiftly slaughtering them all. After the battle, Li Chang recognized the person who saved him. It was his teacher, An Haiyan. An Haiyan and his soldiers paid their respects to Li Chang before everyone returned to the city of Anju. Li Chang recounted everything that had happened in Dongni to An Haiyan, including the conspiracy orchestrated by Prime Minister Zhou Hakjo. He hoped that his teacher would help him return to Hanyang and eliminate the treacherous Zhou Hakjo. However, An Haiyan remained calm and advised the Crown Prince to take some rest. He emphasized that a true leader must always maintain composure, and as the future of the nation, the crown prince must not lose sight of his responsibilities. Outside the room, Seo Bai found the situation suspicious and asked Mu Yang about An Haiyan's character. She was curious why he remained so composed upon encountering the zombies for the first time and why he swiftly decapitated them without hesitation. It seemed like he had a deep understanding of these creatures and even knew how to burn them effectively. Her words triggered a realization in Mu Yang. When the crown prince emerged from An Haiyan's room, Mu Yang informed him of Seo Bai's suspicions and questioned whether An Haiyan had promised to help him. He believed that, at such a critical moment, the crown prince should not easily trust anyone. After all, it had been over a decade since he had last seen An Haiyan, and he had not left Anju during all those years, making it possible that he was in league with Zhou Hak Zhou. Reluctant to doubt his teacher, Li Chang, exhausted, went directly to his room to rest. Meanwhile, in Hanyang, Zhou Hakjo conducted experiments on prisoners and discovered that anyone bitten by a zombie would quickly turn into one. Now it is necessary to prevent everyone from heading north in order to contain the virus outside the city. The next day, he used the queen's authority to issue a decree. Firstly, he dispatched the central army to take control of Anju's defenses and capture the traitorous crown prince. Secondly, he ordered the closure of all northbound passages threatening anyone attempting to go north with severe consequences. By preventing people from heading north, Zhou Hakjo condemned hundreds of thousands of people in the southernmost region of Anju to be trapped in a raging inferno. Yet, this was just the beginning of Zhou Hakjo's conspiracy. Even if he couldn't capture the crown prince, he intended to trap him within Anju, preventing his return to Hanyang. News arrived that the governor of Anju, who had received the orders from Zhou Hakjo, had come to An Haiyan's residence. Seeking to apprehend the criminal crown prince in order to ensure the safety of all the people in Anju. This time, An Haiyan did not intervene. In the meantime, the magistrate of Dongni, who had also received the news, quickly packed his belongings and sought out Seo Bai, whom he owed his life to. He wanted Seo Bai to accompany him in escaping, as they would surely face dire consequences by staying with a crown prince accused of treason. Seo Bai, without hesitation, refused his offer. She believed that people like Cho Biampal had no conscience. The crown prince risked his life to save him, but now he wants to escape without gratitude. She told Cho Biampal to go ahead and escape if he wanted, then turned and left. Cho Biampal started to hesitate and followed Seo Bai back. On the other side, the army chasing the crown prince arrived at An Haiyan's residence. Li Chang stepped out of the room, preparing for a final resistance. At this moment, An Haiyan arrived with the governor of Anju. Facing Zhou Hakjo with a sense of caution, the leader of the royal guard arrogantly declared that he was following orders and would escort the crown prince back to Hanyang as a criminal. He then ordered the royal guard to take action. Mu Yang was the first to step forward and protect the crown prince, followed by An Haiyan speaking up. He questioned who the real traitor to the nation was. As members of the royal guard, they should defend the country and protect the royal family. But now, driven by personal greed, they have become Zhou Hakjo's lackeys and even dare to harm the crown prince. 
Who is the foundation of the nation? They should be executed. Following on Hyan's command, archers who had already been positioned on the rooftops aimed their arrows at the leader and released them. In an instant, all the Royal Guard soldiers fell to the ground. The leader of the Royal Guard attempted a final resistance but was swiftly struck down by the Crown Prince's sword. This meant that on Hyan had ultimately sided with the Crown Prince, signifying that they had completely offended Joe Hack Joe. The governor of Unju was caught in a dilemma. Observing the scene, at that moment, a subordinate arrived and reported that a large number of refugees had gathered outside the city of Unju. These refugees were mostly from the surrounding counties, towns, and villages, which had already been overrun by zombies. Based on the current situation, the zombies would likely reach the outskirts of Unju tonight. The crown prince told the governor of Unju that they must open the city gates to let the refugees in to save their lives. However, the governor of Unju directly refused. He stated that the northbound passages had already been closed, and there would be more refugees to come. They had no capacity to accommodate them within the city. With so many refugees flooding in, how would they eat and find shelter? Once the food ran out, people would start looting, causing panic within the city, but the crown prince refused to let these refugees abandon their lives. No matter how he tried to persuade the governor of Unju, he was unwilling to accept them, left with no choice. The crown prince used his authority to dismiss the governor of Unju and took full control of Unju, opening the city gates to welcome all the refugees inside. Facing the approaching horde of zombies, the crown prince, who understood their characteristics, quickly ordered the entire city of Unju to be surrounded by water barriers. By guarding the two designated checkpoints, he believed that they could protect the entire city of Unju. Everyone joined forces and began preparing for the defense. They cut bamboo to make weapons and set up defenses on the paths that the zombies would inevitably pass through. Meanwhile, inside the palace in Hanyang, the queen's courtyard where pregnant women were kept finally saw someone going into labor. After a night of screaming, the woman gave birth with all her strength, and the other pregnant women outside the door finally breathed a sigh of relief. But just as the sound of the baby's cries filled the air, it abruptly stopped leaving everyone curious and gathering at the door. When a palace maid came out and announced that the baby had been successfully delivered, the other pregnant women asked eagerly if it was a boy or a girl. Disappointed by the answer that it was a girl, they left. Inside the room, another palace maid was cleaning up the bloodstains. It was clear that the queen had not achieved her goal of killing the women and babies after childbirth, waiting for the next pregnant woman to deliver. Meanwhile, in another part of the palace, the apartment where the queen resided was being cleaned, but a servant accidentally knocked over a water basin. The water almost splashed onto the queen's undergarments, reminding her of something she had seen before. The queen recalled that her personal maid had thrown a blood-stained undergarment into the fire, reducing it to ashes. She fantasized about wearing such valuable silk once in her life, thinking it would be worth dying for. Little did she know that their conversation had been overheard by the queen, facing such a gossiping maid. The queen naturally did not want to let her go easily. So, that evening, she sent the young maid to serve her during her bath. The maid carefully undressed the queen, but the scene she witnessed in the next second made her panic and kneel on the spot. She saw the secret on the queen's abdomen, and it turned out to be the reason why the queen's undergarments were stained with blood. As for her fate, there was only one way out death. Meanwhile, in the city of Anju, Cho Biampal from Dongni tried to win Siobai's favor by voluntarily going into the mountains to dig for herbs. Unfortunately, after much effort, all he managed to dig up were wild grasses. With no other choice, Siobai ventured into the mountains again to search for the herbs. It was during this search that she stumbled upon the fabled frozen valley mentioned by her master. Inside, she indeed found the resurrection plant that could bring people back from the dead. And at that moment, a figure slowly passed behind them. The sound of a rope breaking in the distance alerted their senses. As night fell, the people of Unju prepared themselves for a final, decisive battle against the zombies. Meanwhile, the royal army was stationed nearby. Observing Li Chang and his group in Unju, Prime Minister Zhou Hakjo personally took the field, determined to kill Li Chang and avenge his son. With anxious hearts, they waited through the night. But what awaited them was not only the zombies but also the central army. However, as the dawn gradually broke, the zombies did not appear. Only then did the people begin to relax and prepare to return for rest and recovery. But then, a loud noise came from the nearby valley. A large flock of crows flew overhead, bringing a sense of foreboding. Even the water on the ground began to tremble. Everyone stared at the swaying forest in the distance, their faces filled with fear. On the other side, Siobai and Cho Biampal found themselves surrounded by zombies at the mountain cave. Fortunately, 
The nearby water source temporarily hindered the zombies' movements. Seobai finally understood that these zombies were not afraid of sunlight but of temperature. A bloody and fierce battle was about to unfold in the city of Unju. 